So here we're going to talk about um, problem 664, but before we do that, I want to review a few concepts. Remember that um, in order to know what state you have, you can do it by one of two ways. By looking at the given information in the tables, and you can only find the information on the table corresponding to the phase that it's in. But if you only look at the saturated tables, you can see that as well. So let's see this with an example. Here we have a, a fluid, in this case H2O, and it's asking what is the state or the phase at 40 degrees Celsius and 3 kilopascals. And the information given is the one that it's a saturated conditions. So we can see it in two ways. Um, if you have a given temperature and a given pressure, if your temperature is larger than the saturation pressure, then you know it's going to be superheated. Vapor. Um, in terms of the pressure, if your pressure is less than the p set, that's when you have the superheat. Now, if your pressure is larger than p set, remember you're putting more pressure, like a pressure cooker, so you're keeping it as compressed liquid. So the opposite for the temperature also prevails. If the temperature is less than the T sat, then you have compressed liquid. Okay? So having said that, let's answer this question given the saturated information. So here you have 40 degrees Celsius, which is what you have here, and you have three kilopascals, but here the pressure is 7.38, that's the saturation pressure. So what you have is a pressure that it's less than the saturation pressure. Three kilopascals, of course, it's less than the saturation. So you're letting it um, kind of vaporize because the pressure is less. So what we have here is superheated vapor. Take a moment to understand this, and um, of course you can pause this video and look at it and understand it. If you have any questions, you can email me. Okay, so I said we were going to discuss 664, which is an example of uh, a problem using a uh, refrigerant, but I want to do something similar for water because the concepts are the same. Uh, the concept of saturation pressure compared to pressure or saturation temperature compared to temperature is the same in the case of a refrigerant that it is in the case of the water. Those same concepts prevail. So the reading of the problem statement is extremely important because there's uh, clues as to the nature of the problem. Okay, so you need to read the instructions, and um, in general, you know, there's this research that says that women read the instructions more than men, uh, so we need, you may need to prove this research uh, wrong. This example says water enters a boiler at 4,000 kilopascals as a saturated liquid. This part here is very important. It's telling me it's saturated, but it's a saturated liquid. Remember, it can be saturated liquid, saturated gas, or saturated mixture. In case it's, in this case, it's telling it's a saturated liquid. And leaves at 350 degrees Celsius at the same pressure. Calculate the change in enthalpy per unit mass of water, and you assume that there's no change in elevation or potential energy, not your in velocity or kinetic energy. So what you have is sort of a boiler, and you have the pressure here is
4,000 kilopascals, and it, um, it doesn't tell me the temperature. I don't even hear that the temperature is 350 degrees Celsius. Now, it doesn't tell me the temperature, however, it tells me that it's a saturated liquid. So that means it is at the saturation temperature. So when I look at um, the table, 4,000 kilopascals, I'm looking at table A5, saturated water, and uh, here I have my 4,000 kilopascals. So this tells me that this is the temperature at which is coming in, 250.35 degrees Celsius. Read it because I covered it. So, here we go. And it's telling me it's a saturated liquid. So, I have a saturated liquid. Saturated liquid. And I need to calculate the change in enthalpy. So, this is the enthalpy that I have going in. And this is the temperature. So, the temperature is 250. Nine. Marker is not very good today. 35 degrees. And this is the initial um, enthalpy. It's telling me that it leaves at 350 degrees Celsius at the same pressure. So that means here the pressure is also 4,000 kilopascals. So since the temperature is 350, I know that then my temperature, this is my T sat here, this is this under saturated conditions, my temperature is larger than my saturation temperature. 350 is larger than 250. So I know that I have to look for the table for superheated vapor to find the enthalpy of this uh, water leaving the boiler. So when I look, um, and I'm so I apologize for that. There's so um, what I want you to do is to find that number and know the results because a problem like this will be in the exam. Okay. So let's look at another example. Steam is throttled by a well insulated valve. The temperature drop of the steam after the expansion is to be determined. And usually there's some assumptions that you need to follow. There's, all of these are steady flow processes. There's only one entrance and one exit. Remember we talked about all these kinds of valves, turbines, pumps, compressors, boilers, diffusers, nozzles. And this is a throttle valve. Kinetic and potential energy changes are negligible. The heat transfer to and from the fluid is negligible. Um, and there are no work interactions involved. So these are the initial conditions that we have. Pressure 1 is 8 megapascals, and temperature 1 is 350. And the pressure leaving is 2 megapascals. Okay, now you have to review the equations that are the energy balance reactions, okay? And that is the long slide, and I'll write the equation here and then erase it, because um, we had this uh, going in minus work going in, um, or let me do it the other way. Um, plus, and then here we have only one in and one out, so it would be M1 H plus V1 2 plus DC1 equals 
the out, this would be the out, okay, and this is the in or the one, out plus w out plus m2 h2 plus v2 squared over 2 plus dc2. So there's no heat going in and out from the adiabatic. There's no work because there's no compressor, there's no um, turbine or electricity or anything going in. It said that the kinetic energies are the same, same elevation. So for a throttle valve, and I said I was going to erase it, so let me erase this. So for total valve, then what we have is the expression is m dot h1 equals m dot h2, okay? And so this cancels out, and what we have is h1 equals h2 which is a very important concept for throttle valve, okay? So, let me, then let's take a look at P1 equals 8 megapascals, and temperature 1 equals to 350 uh, degrees Celsius. So, um, if I look at the 8 megapascals here, and this is the superheated water, I could have gone to the saturation conditions and seen that this is the temperature, and 350 is larger than 295, so this is superheated vapor. So the enthalpy going in, remember you have 350 degrees Celsius, is Two hundred two thousand ninety eight. So H one equals twenty nine eighty eight point one. And look at the units. Kilojoules per kilogram. Okay. So then it tells me that the pressure is two megapascals, and we need to find the drop in temperature. Well, we know that here, the enthalpy here and the enthalpy here at the entrance and exit are the same. So now I have to find a different temperature that gives me an enthalpy of the same value, 2988.1 at a pressure of 2 megapascals. So I move to the 2 megapascal pressure. And what I see here is that I need to find that value somewhere in the 2 megapascal. When I look at this table, the point where I can find the 2988 is somewhere between, well, actually, it's going to be between the temperature between, and this would be um, 250. To 300 degrees Celsius. So between 250, because here I have 2903 and then 32, 3024, so this would be the temperature. If I asked you for the exact temperature, then you would have to interpolate. And for that, there is another uh, video showing how to do interpolation. But if not, at least you can say, the temperature range where you would find it, okay? So now you have 
found a new temperature, and of course the change in temperature would be the difference between the T1 and that new temperature. Now this is a problem for refrigerant uh, 134A. This is problem um, 664E, okay? And it's very similar, but there's a trick to, to this one, and we'll see in a moment. That here it tells me that the pressure at the entrance is 160 psi. So now we're dealing with English, not SI units. And it's telling me it's a saturated liquid and leaves at 30 psi. So determine the temperature and internal energy across the valve. Same thing, and really it's a valve. And all of these assumptions are valid. Usually, whenever they don't give you any more information of heat losses, then you assume it's adiabatic as well. There's no work, of course, in this situation. No change in elevation, no change in potential energy. Okay? So, what we're going to do is then find at the pressure of 160, this is a saturated pressure because it's telling me it's a saturated liquid, and I will find the temperature and the internal energy at the entrance. So what I have done here is copied the tables that are necessary. So what we have here is a temperature of 160, and it's saturated. So this is my temperature. So the initial temperature is 109.5, and this is degrees Fahrenheit, OK? And the enthalpy is 48.519, and these are units of BTU per pound mass. And of course, the internal energy, and, and, and this is 48 because it's a saturated liquid. Remember, this is saturated liquid. This would be if it was vapor, and then you have some numbers in between. And this would be the internal energy, which in this case is very, very close. So now it went from a pressure of 160 psi and a temperature of 109.5 and internal energy or enthalpy, and then you have internal energy. So now we have to say, well, the enthalpy at the exit of this valve has to be the same. But now I have a pressure of 30. Okay, so it went to 30. Now, when I look at the pressure of 30, here I see that the enthalpies go from 17.06 to 105.8. I don't have an exact 48.51, but I know that it's still saturated because the enthalpy that I can find is somewhere there. So what I know is it's a saturated mixture now. So because remember, H1 equals H2. So now in H2, I have a pressure of 30. PSI, okay, and an enthalpy, which is the same as before, which is 48.519 BTU per pound mass, okay? I put here the superheated because whenever you look at 30 PSI in here, the enthalpy is 106. So I know it's not superheated refrigerant because I'm looking for a an enthalpy of 48, okay? So then I know that the, if you remember the shape of the, if we have in this case, we're uh, looking at enthalpy and different temperatures. So remember, it would be something like this. So I know that then my enthalpy is in this case, if I have here for pressure of 
30 PSI. Here I have my 17.006, and here I have uh, for the saturated vapor 105. And I'm sorry, I need to do something about improving this 32. So I know that then I have an enthalpy with a mixture. Okay, so let me raise this. And going back to this is my H2 equals H1. So then I look and my temperature is 15.3. So my temperature 2 is 15.3. 7 in the book, I think they use 15.4 degrees Fahrenheit. So, um, in this case, you have a change in temperature. If you had to calculate the change in enthalpy, well, there's no change in enthalpy because the enthalpies are the same, so the change in enthalpy would be zero. I hope this clarifies that problem. And again, I put here this uh, refrigerant, and I'm giving you here a link. And these uh, slides are also on Blackboard. You can look for the NTISB um, information and find any curves for different things. I hope this uh, helps. If you have any questions, please remember to email me. Thank you very much for getting to this point. Bye.